Hello and welcome to Heiser Media's coverage of the 2024 Tyler B. Cause presented by Infinite Dis in Newtown, Pennsylvania, Tyler State Park Eastside. Thanks to our sponsors, Flagship Financial and the Bucks County Disc Golf Alliance. I'm Brett Hensley and I'm joined in the virtual booth today with Matt Bruder. All proceeds from this charity tournament benefit Children's Hospital of Philadelphia via the Extra Life campaign. Please use the link at the bottom of the screen to donate and help the cause. Hey Matt, let's check in on our lead card here and the leaderboard. Yeah, so Alex and Sean tied at the top at two under a piece. They're followed by Evan Vanshee. He's just five strokes back at three over. Uh, and Greg Wheeler rounding out our card at five over. Uh, these guys have, uh, you know, these last nine holes to try to make a push as best they can. Yeah, looking forward to it. Go ahead, Matt, why don't you tell us uh, what hole 10 has? So hole 10 is a 321 foot par three um, to an elevated basket on the green. There's really two looks. There's a, a right, left side forehand gap and there's a right side backhand gap. Uh, looks like Sean going with a bit of a flex forehand here. Uh, and he's gonna catch an early tree and kick into that rough. That could be trouble. Yeah, tough break from Alex after a strong start. He's going to have to scramble to save his par. I think the forehand probably sets up better off this tee shot, but we are going to see a backhand line here from Sean. Looks like he's executed it very well, and he's going to be parked. What a great tight shot there down the right side, feeding right at the elevated basket. Greg looking to follow suit here with the backhand. He's got it turned. Looks like it's starting to fight back, and... He's about circle's edge. He'll have a look for the bird. Yeah, that's going to be a tough putt with how high that basket sits, but he'll at least have a look at it. And we'll see Evan here playing the more traditional route forehand. Looked like he saw it off a little early, but he's going to roll up there to close to circle's edge. He's a good putter, uh, so he, you know, hopefully be able to connect and uh, get himself another birdie. And Sean's in a tough position here. He's got a little overhead scramble shot and and he throws it very well i mean he got himself a little past the pin he'll have about a 20 foot comebacker for the par but that's about as good as you can do from there that's some really good stuff out of sean yeah that's a solid scramble that's what you're going to need to do here on the this back nine to keep your lead and we can see evan unfortunately just goes over top of the basket it was a good bid it was centered on the pole just a bit too high I like that he's not missing low though, Brad. It's good to see him giving the full commitment to each and every one of these putts out here. Let's see if Greg can uh, do the same with his birdie look. Yeah, absolutely, Evan and Greg are gonna need to make up strokes, so they're gonna be running everything. Greg's just a little low, but that'll sit. Should be no problem for his three. We can see Sean, he's got pretty much just to tap in here to clean up and connect on his par. Really great save from there. But unfortunately, he's going to be losing a stroke, I believe, here to Alex, who should be parked. Nice cleanup from Evan. Didn't go as far past as I initially thought. Uh, but still good to be making these comebackers. They can be a little nervy towards the end of a round like this. Yeah, you always want to take your time on an elevated basket, even if you're close. Just make sure you get the angle of the disc right so you're not putting it into the basket or into the band. And there's the tap in from Alex after a great backhand drive, taking the birdie and taking the lead over Sean by a stroke. We're going to move over to hole 11. This is one of the hardest holes that you'll ever see at Tyler. It's a 451 foot par three, very straight shot. Um, and really it's really tough to keep a disc straight for that long, um, especially for how tight this fairway is. And uh, Alex going with one of the more traditional plays, just a backhand right up the middle. He's gonna be a little left in that rough. Uh, we'll see if he's got himself a look to get up and down for a three. It looks like Sean's going to get aggressive here with a forehand line, trying to play the flex forehand around this right side of the large tree. He didn't get it over enough, and that's probably just going to fade out into the right side rough. That's going to be a really tough up and down from in there. 
Yeah, and I don't mind this forehand look. It takes the gap out of play, but this time of year, it can be really tough to get through clean because there's just so much grown in, especially on that right side. Uh, really takes a perfect throw to get all the way through and, and get yourself the distance you want. You know, I'm kind of surprised Evan isn't going with the forehand. I know he likes that forehand turnover. I don't know if he does that play on this hole, but unfortunately, he looked like he early released that into the left tree, kick to the right rough. So he's going to be scrambling too. It's almost an automatic bogey from over there. It's really tough to access the green. Yeah, and, and the most important part about playing out here at Tyler is when you find yourself in those situations, you never want to try to play the hero shot. Because, you know, you could play for the bogey, but if you try to save par from back there, you could end up taking much worse. Yeah, absolutely. I think the... Greg and Evan don't really have too much of a choice here if they want to make a move on second or first place here. But yeah, to your point there, he catches some trees. Luckily, he kicked out to the middle of the fairway. It's still going to be a tough up and down even from there. That probably the biggest tree at Tyler in the way guarding the green. And Sean lining up a pretty big forehand hyzer. And that wow. circles the pin. That is parked. That's a great shot for his three. Outstanding stuff out of Sean. Yeah, I guess automatic bogey wasn't necessarily correct. That was a fantastic shot. And Evan plays a really good forehand up shot to get himself in the circle there. Save his bogey. Yeah, and finally getting up here to Alex. He's going to be a little short right of the pin, but should be circle one for his par. You can see Greg still fighting here on the right side. He's got it through past the big tree, but he's fading out left, and that's going to be a tough circle two putt there to save his bogey. Yeah, and you can really see why this is one of the harder holes here at Tyler, just between the distance and the amount of accuracy that you need to stay in the fairway and cover that distance. It really requires a, a technical shot that, also has some power behind it. Yeah, I totally agree. This hole, I don't think, had a single birdie on the day. Let's see, Evan's lining up his par putt. And fantastic save there. Oh, my, my mistake, a bogey putt. That's right, he had to fight out of the, of the woods. But solid putt there from Evan nonetheless, taking the bogey, unfortunately dropping a stroke. Yeah, and, and this is a big moment here too. Alex with his par putt. He knows Sean's parked for his par, so he doesn't want to lose a stroke here. And he won't. He's going to you know handle business like he has all around on the putting green. Um, be sure to check out the front nine if you want to see some more good putting from Alex. Yeah, absolutely. And as a reminder, this is the MA1 field of nine players. So we're seeing four of the nine here on lead card. And we'll have a few more tap-ins here. Yeah, and unfortunately, Greg's going to take the double. So Greg and Evan just kind of fading back here. It looks like a two-man race as we get into hole 12. And you said it, hole 12 here, 352-foot, par 3. Uh, it's a slightly downhill shot with a slight right to left uh, turning fairway. The basket is down in a ditch here behind these rocks. Um, you used to be able to just slide something into that ditch, and now it requires a shot with a little more height, something that kind of fades over top of the rocks. Um, and Alex here, he's given given the disc some good height. Um, I'd imagine that's probably right around the edge of those rocks. He should have a look for the two, if not an easy up and down for his three. We'll see Sean here. It's like he uh, unfortunately sawed off a little bit connected with the tree on the left, you really want to push this kind of as straight as you can for a bit and just kind of let it gradually fade over to the green. Yeah, and, and again, that goes to show the technicality of some of these tee shots. If you're off by a little bit, you're in some trouble, and Evan's going to have some work to do from there. Yeah, I think that's the common mistake. You're trying to pump one straight and far, and you just kind of overturn it or you pull it to the right. Looks like Greg, though, may have fought through the right side and gotten down there. Unfortunately, it looks like 
Evan did not, so he's going to have a longer upshot. Yeah, and he's fortunate that he's got as open of a look as he does because you can get into some real trouble back there in those bushes, and, and that looks like he's executed pretty well, uh, getting up and down, give himself a look for his par. Matt, what do you think about the new boulder placements by the by the pin? Um, I like being able to skip my disc into Me the too. ditch, but <laughs> it's <laughs> it's nice, you know. You have a little bit a little bit more to think about on the tee shot. It just demands a little bit more of a technical shot from you. It involves distance control, um, speed control, all of that, all that yeah, fun stuff. They look great, um, but they definitely have taken a few birdie putts from me definitely taking you know harder birdie putts in practice rounds for sure speaking of birdie putts wow. i mean alex that is those rocks were trying to you know keep him at bay but he does not care he's just gonna grab another birdie and keep it moving yeah great putt there from alex to really continue to put the pressure on sean here he's also at the top of the rocks oh and unfortunately catches the top nub on the basket and he's going to drop another stroke here to Alex. Well, it looks like Evan went a little deep with his approach, but cleans up the par nonetheless. Yeah, you got to be careful there because there is OB road, but luckily he stayed in the grass and solid putt there from Evan to save the par. We get to Greg here. Looks like he's got about a 20 footer here. Save his par. And solid putt there from Greg, not dropping any strokes there to Evan. And this will be the tap in four for Sean. Uh, at this point in the round, Brett, what do you think Sean's thinking right now? Well, after dropping two strokes on that hole, he's thinking he's got to make up some strokes somehow. And, you know, he's two off the, he's three off the lead now. Um, he doesn't really have anyone pushing him for second place, so he can just really kind of focus on match play with Alex, trying to, you know, pick up a stroke when he can. There's plenty of holes left. Yeah, and hole 13 is no exception to that. This is a 496 foot par four. Plays a little shorter than some of the par fours you'll see out here at Tyler. Um, prim primarily, it's a, a forehand off the tee. Some people go with a sneaky backhand, kind of through the right side. Um, and then should just be a, a fairly straight approach into the green. Um, Looks like we're, I'm, Alex, a, I'm a sneaky backhand thrower. Yeah, you take your comet wow. and you throw it right down that right-hand side, oh, yeah. which Alex oh, yeah. Alex finds the line very nicely. That should be pretty good position for his up and down. Yeah, you called it. Comet all day off the tee here. And we're going to see a forehand from Evan. And unfortunately, he just kind of, Throws it off to the left, maybe a little late release. I know Evan's got a really good forehand, so I know he's going to be disappointed with that effort. Yeah, and on a hole like this, this is one of those where it doesn't look that punishing, but if you don't make your initial gap, it can be tough for you to uh, you know, get up and down for that birdie and sometimes even to salvage a par. And this is more what you're looking for. A little flex down the left side from Sean, fading right back to the middle of the fairway. He should be set up for an up and down there for birdie. And Evan trying to make a play just to get back in the fairway. It looked like he hit a late tree, but should be at least on the edge. And you can see Greg was on the fairway on the right side. He had a straight shot. Unfortunately, he just got that disc completely nose up and it faded out to the left in the rough. And Alex got some good distance off this backhand shot, but it's just a little pulled. This can be a tricky spot straddling out, and you've got a bit of a gap to hit here. Uh, not the easiest up and down. And here's um, a big, wow, look at this drive yeah, from Sean. Great drive on the left side. Big up and down shot to try to get a stroke on Alex. And it looks like he's parked, and he's going to be getting at least one on Alex if – Alex can manage to get up and down from where he is. And speaking of, easy up and down there from Alex. So he's only going to end up losing one stroke to Sean. This is Greg's third. Very nice out from Greg. Just there's a lot, there's a lot to hit over there and, and just a few small gaps. So being able to get back out into the fairway, that's just very well done. 
See, Evan's going to have a long sickle to look here. Jump putt and nails it. What another fantastic putt by Evan to save his par. He's going to be thrilled with that one. <laughs> Not much emotion, but that's a big putt. Yeah, that's about as, as excited as you'll see Evan for anything, especially a highlight putt such as that. That, uh, that was a good effort out of him. And, and this is just a routine birdie for Sean. A couple of simple shots for him, uh, especially with the forehand ability that he's got. Um, I'm sure he's happy to get that stroke back that he lost on 12. Yeah, absolutely. Great birdie. Matt, what do you think? Hole 13 at Tyler. For me, it's a top five hole. What about you? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely, you know, a, a good combination of satisfying to birdie, but also challenging. Um, I love it in the B pin. I love it in the C pin. Um, a lot of cool features, shot variations you can throw. Definitely a, a signature hole at Tyler. Speaking of signature holes, hole 14, also known as the three Amandos, uh, we're only going to be playing one of the Amandos today um, as we're going to the B pin. This is one of the tougher par threes coming in at 365 feet. And it's not as much the distance, but it's the shot shape required as well as the guarded green. Um, most players are going to favor kind of a pushing hyzer backhand. Uh, with a relatively overstable disc. Um, and that's exactly what Sean's looking for here. Something to kind of push that right side uh, and then just keep moving left towards the pin. Yeah, I kind of go back and forth between throwing a stable putter or throwing a stable fairway on this tee. I think either one really works. You just got to make sure you push past that Mando, uh, which unfortunately there... I believe what's that uh, Alex who missed it. Yeah, and, and it's a really common mistake because one of the misses you don't want to have here is pushing too straight. You never want to push too straight. And sometimes when you're trying to control that distance or you're trying to stall your disc, it can be easy to have that early release that just misses the Mando entirely. Great. Gray's got this nice fading left. Good stability on that disc. That should be really uh, set up there uh, to get his up and down birdie. And I don't believe I mentioned on the whole preview, but any shots that miss the Mando go to this drop zone here that we just saw Alex throw from. Uh, so he'll, he was throwing three from there, looking to get up and down for his bogey. Yeah, almost pretty much an automatic bogey from that drop zone, I think. You can see Ale or, um, Evan just trying to get out of the rough there. I think he squared up a tree, unfortunately. And that's a nice up and down from Greg here. This, uh, this green's got a little more slope than you can see on the camera, and it's very easy for your approach shots to get away from you. So keeping it close to the pin is... Uh, you know, it can be tricky, but it's definitely rewarding on this hole. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like Sean got pin high left. He should be in the circle there. And Alex has a tricky lie. Nice little manufacture there to get in the circle. Like I said, it's a tough par save from the drop zone. Or just a tough bogey save even. And this is what Evans left with for his three. Gives it a decent bid, just comes up a little short. Nice. Great putt from Sean there to get his par. This is a tough one to get a birdie on. I'm not sure. I don't know if there were any in the field at all today. Yeah, no birdies on 14, unfortunately. It's a really tough birdie to get. It's a nice... Clean up from Greg, nice clean par. I did have the pleasure of playing uh, with the MPO winner um, this day, uh, Sean Beerley. Shout out Sean Beerley. He uh, hit a 100-foot birdie putt on this hole uh, right in my face, and it was incredible to watch. As disheartening as it was as a competitor, it was incredible to watch. So, Sean Beerley, if you're watching this, shout out to you. Oh, that's fantastic. Any birdie on this is a phenomenal. 100 foot throw in makes it even better. Off the Absolutely. hole 15. 
yeah, hole 15. This is another one of those slightly longer par threes. Um, very specific fairway. You've got casual water on the right. You've got some pretty thick rough on the left. Um, really, you want to hit this gap and stay in the fairway. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a pretty tough gap to hit. And, and Sean looks like he's going to be rolling into that rough. Should stay up, hot, up top, but um, he'll be scrambling from there. And Greg's going to show us the backhand route trying to push right through the field goal here, through the trees, turning his disc right, hopefully. It's like he turned it over to the right. It did sneak through the gap, and he'll probably have a circle two putt from there. Not a bad result. Yeah, he's definitely happy with that. Anything anything through this gap, you're, you're pretty happy about. Um, Evan going with the forehand, not too sure where that ended up. He's right in the middle. Looks like he just caught a tree and, and sat right in the middle. Yeah, fortunate kick there. And Sean, or rather Alex, trying to recover from that double bogey on the last hole. He early released it. He's going to be on the left side rough, and that's going to be a tough save from over there. Evan, I believe this is his pig, just trying to get something to stick up by the green, and that's nicely done. He'll have a putt. These are some big shots here from both Alex and Sean, both out of position, trying to scramble to save their par. See, great shot there from Sean. Looks like he's in the circle, left side, pin high. Fantastic scramble. Yeah, and here's, here's Alex in a bit of a pickle. Going to be scrambling out with his forehand. Um, and that's, you know, that's solid. That's about as good as you can do from there. So, yeah, it looks like we're going to, they're going to remain tied if they both can hit their 20 foot, less than 20 foot putts, I believe. We'll see Greg here trying to line up a really long putt. Kind of got that nose up and just kind of sailed left for him, but should have an easy putt from there. It's like Evan's got this big tree to contest with, and that's that's a solid putt. That's a, a shorter putt, but when you're having to straddle all the way around these trees, it can be uh, it can just make it that much more difficult to convert. Yeah, absolutely. You got to bring a good straddle putt game when you come to Tyler. Lots of trees in the way, protecting the basket, and a solid cleanup there from Greg to save his par. Yeah, talking about straddle putts, Greg Wheeler's your guy. I've played many league rounds with Greg, and he's uh, got that very consistent spinny straddle putt. Um, no surprise to see him convert from there. Alex, same thing, just a pretty routine cleanup for his par, and uh, looks like Sean will do the same. A straddle putt's a really good tool to have. It's something that I certainly had to work on. Um, it's not quite where I want it, but still a work in progress. Yeah, for sure. Playing in the woods, it's definitely something that uh, that you'll need. And we're going to check back into our leaderboard. Alex and Sean, really just the two of them at the top of the leaderboard at two under. Uh, Evan, now seven behind. He's at five over. And we're going to see which one of these two can take it down in the final stretch here. Hole 16, we've got a par four, 686 feet. OB along the right-hand side in this tall grass. I don't believe the left side was playing OB for this tournament. Um, to the B pin, it's slightly guarded. You've got some trees surrounding it, but um, pretty open. If you can get to the hill on the tee shot, you've got a turnover or a forehand into the green. I think this plays us the longest hole on the east side in, on this layout. Looks like this is hanging out over the OB, and that's going to find the out of bounds for Sean. Yeah, that's a really tough break there after battling back to tie it with Alex. We'll see Greg on the tee pad next. He's going to try to make the correction, and looks like he overcorrected a little bit. And he's going to skip into the left side rough, and it unfortunately is playing OB today. Um, I guess they kind of kept that going from previous tournaments as well. Yeah, and, and that's a danger here. With this, with a shot like this, you really want to hang something out over the out-of-bounds. You want to throw a disc that you trust, and 
Um, Evan just a little bit too low, doesn't really give it the height to work back in bounds. Um, and that's the risk that you run when you're going for a shot like this. And Alex looks like he's made the adjustment and uh, he's going to settle in bounds. Yeah, that's a big shot. He's already going to be one stroke ahead and Sean's going to have to throw from almost, um, it's practically re-teeing when you're that close to the tee box. So he's really going to need to get this in bounds and it's like he's going to play a safe forced turnover shot. I say safe, but the left side OB is still up there and he has just gone out of bounds again. At least he will get that distance, but that's going to be two OB strokes. Yeah, this is a deceiving hole. You you step up to the tee pad and you think, oh, I'm finally out in the open. I can just bomb a disc out here. Um, but there is some some technicality to it, and, and we're seeing that here with, with Evan's shot as well yeah. as that leaks OB on the right side. You guys okay if I mark um, it? And yeah, it can be it can be punishing if you're not hitting your lines out here. Yeah, we can see Greg. You can't really see off the tee when it fades off to the left, so just kind of making sure he's got his spot right, and it does look correct based on what we saw. So he's going to be in a better spot at least, even though he went out of bounds, and that's just probably a throller. I don't think he was trying to go roller, but luckily it didn't roll hard to the right, so he's still up there and made some decent progression. And Alex just needs to keep working to the right. Looks like he's going to find that out of bounds island in the middle. Um, and that's that's tough. But I think uh, he was he saw Sean go out of bounds twice and tried to play a little conservative. And maybe uh, that mistake was what resulted. Yeah, that is a big miss considering Sean had gone out OB twice. So... The damage is probably not going to be as bad here if Sean can get up and down. He's throwing a flex forehand. This looks really good. Oh, right under the basket. That is a huge shot. Putting more pressure now on Alex to get up and down from where he went OB. Greg going with the turnover here. It's going to be a little on the right side, but as long as he doesn't have that one tree in his way, he should have a look at the basket. Yeah, and here's an important up and down for Sean. It's like he's going with a little float, somewhat jump putt in East Park. So he's likely going to be still getting a stroke because Sean had gone OB twice where Alex had only gone once. And there's a really nice putt there from Evan, unfortunately taking a double bogey. We're going to see some big numbers on this hole with all the out-of-bounds throws. Yeah, and again, that's just Evan showing some of that mental fortitude. You know, you step up to a, a long putt after a couple of OB strokes, and, uh, you know, it's just as important to make that putt as if it was for birdie or for par. So it's uh, good to see that late in the round. We're still getting that same focus out of these guys. Oh, and I guess Greg just didn't kind of straddle out far enough to connect on that. He's going to hit the tree and take another – Big number. So Alex was able to at least minimize the damage to just a bogey after that one OB stroke. Greg's going to pick up a double, and I believe Sean's going to pick up a double as well after going OB twice. Yeah, and, and that's what can happen out here on the 16th. All the out of bounds. Uh, definitely a lot of trouble you can find yourself in. And, and uh, we've got some spectators on the green here. Um, another feature at Tyler is all the all the nature moments and different wildlife you can encounter. Um, as we move over to hole 17, a five, roughly 506 foot par four, slightly uphill. You've got out of bounds, tall grass on the right, the out of bounds, left side bushes. Um, it's one of the softer par fours out here at Tyler. Um, so definitely one that these guys are gonna want to attack for the three. And Alex putting a, a nice backhand just out there in the fairway. Um, should be a pretty routine up and down for him from there. Yeah, I think you really just got to stay out of the OB and you'll have a really good shot at birdie, even if you don't bite off a ton of distance on your initial drive. And you can see Sean throwing a nice flex forehand, getting way down there, left side, very safe over there. Uh, they should both have a chance to get a birdie here.
I think Greg just liked the line that Sean threw going for the flex forehand. He's going to get some good progress out there as well. Um, really anything inbounds on this hole is, is ideal. Um, this hole is reachable for these guys in two. Uh, I don't think any of them would have a hard time getting up and down from where they're at. Yeah, another – there's a solid forehand there from Evan. The only tricky part – I think can be if you fade off to the right and you have to throw around that tree. Um, but it looks like everyone's in pretty decent position here to try and get up and down for their birdie. Greg's going to test the OB right. He gets over it and it looked like it skipped towards the basket. He should be in the circle. Yeah, like you said, definitely out here on the right side of the fairway. And as we see Alex having some trouble getting around the tree, it's definitely something you have to do, trusting your disc over that out of bounds to get over it and fade back towards the basket. Um, Sean's going to be flexing a forehand up there. Should be about circle's edge, I'd say. Um, and he'll be looking at the three to try to tie Alex at the top. Yeah, that's a big moment there, Sean, trying to get his stroke there after Alex hits the tree. Looked like Evan just sawed that off a little bit. It went towards the OB, but I think he stayed safe. Um, and he'll probably have a circle two putt there for his birdie. This is an important up and down here for Alex. And it looks like he's done just enough to get up and down for his par. Um, minimize the damage and make sure that he only loses one stroke to Sean. So I think Sean went further than I thought, but he cans the putt. He's been making putt after putt. Great job from Sean there. Again, with that elevation disc, just putting it right in the heart of the basket. Yeah, and Brett, we've got ourselves a tie game going into 18. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, and unfortunately, Evan just kind of hit the lower part of the band there. Just maybe lost a little bit of focus. Good cleanup from Greg for his three. So, yeah, it's going to come down to hole 18. Tie at the top. 18 is 18B is a really, really difficult birdie. Um, I think par, you know, could potentially take it. Uh, I think, you know, it's just you really want to get out of the, out of the initial gap um, and, you know, trying to collect your par. Yeah, and, and like you're saying, hole 18, par 3, 261 feet. Uh, definitely plays a little more than that as it's pretty severely uphill. Um, you've got that initial gap to navigate, and then you want your disc to move left as it stays moving up the hill. And the green is guarded by some low-hanging branches and some trees. Um, so there is some technicality as well as some rollaway potential once you get up there. And Alex gets most of the way, or I'm sorry, Sean gets most of the way through, hits a late tree, um, but should have a decent look at his three from there. Yeah, I think if you're not trying to get the birdie, you take that drive. You got through most of the way. And you can see Greg, pure as the gap. He gets up by the A-pin, should have an easy up and down. Solid shot to end the tournament there for Greg. And Alex lining up a bit of an unconventional gap here, going with a flex shot through that left side. Uh, that's very well done. You don't really see too many people go that route, but if you can hit that initial gap, it can pay off. And Evan just turned that over a little bit too much, and it turned into a roller off to the right side. I do. I used to like that right side gap before they elevated this tee pad. I feel like I can't get the angle right. Um, but it is there, and we saw a really great executed shot there from Alex going down the right, getting through clean. So putting some pressure here on Sean to get up and down. And I think he just sawed off that shot. He had too much hyzer on it, and it just came, came out just going right out of his hand, and he's going to have a really long look for par. And we'll see Greg trying to contend with some of these trees and the low branches. He wants nothing to do with it. He's just going to put it up to that left side. Um, nice, simple up for his par. Yeah, absolutely. You see, even though Evan didn't really execute the shot, it's wide open over here on the right. And he puts it up on the hillside. He'll be about 25 feet for his par. And 
Here's a really huge up and down here from Alex. Yeah, and that's solid. He knows Sean's a little bit out of position, and he figured, you know what, a little bit of match play going on. He wants to see him make that putt. Um, so really, it's going to come down to this. Sean, checking the distance, wants to see if he can step it or not. Um, you know, having just hit a pretty big stepper on the last hole, maybe he's thinking he can uh, utilize that here. Uh, but he's going to need this if he's going to stay tied with Alex. Yeah, this looks really close to Circle's edge. See what he's going to try and do if he's going to step it. Oh, and he comes oh. up just short. And it looked great out of the hand. It just kind of fell out of the sky on him. Sometimes that happens when you just don't put enough spin on the disc. And unfortunately, it rolled back. He had been making those all day long. Hopefully, he can can this one. There we go. Great putt. Unfortunately, that's going to feel really bad to kind of end the tournament there and end his chance of winning. Um, but he put on a really great battle with Alex, who presumably is going to have a tap in to take down the tournament. Yeah, really good stuff out of both of these guys, hitting some big putts and just keeping it in the fairway. I mean, you can tell the scorecards are pretty clean for both of these guys, um, you know, executing their putts when they had to and just keeping it clean down the stretch. Yeah, absolutely. Good putt there from Greg, securing his par. Hopefully Evan can do the same here. And another solid putt from Evan to secure his par as well. So it looks like if things hold up with the – Chase card, Evan will stay in third, followed by Greg in fourth. And then here's our champion with the tap in, Alex. Great par, played this hole really clean, played a lot of really clean golf today. Lots of great putting, well-deserved victory. Yeah, very cool to see these guys battle out here. Um, again, with the, the camera out there for this MA1 field, there can be a lot of nerves and it was cool to see, you know, the four of these guys battle through that today. And um, I think they all put up respectable efforts. Yeah, absolutely. It was a joy to watch them play such really good high level disc golf. Let's see the final leaderboard. So Alex in first place, Sean in second, Evan in third. It does look like Dale ended up catching and tying things up with Evan to share uh, from the chase card to share the podium there in third place. So really solid disc golf. Thank you to our sponsors, Elevation Discs. And again, all proceeds of this tournament go to benefit the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia via their Extra Life campaign. If you want to make a donation, there's a link at the bottom. And thank you so much for tuning in to Heiser Media. We'll catch you on the next one.